Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to our cosy little corner of the internet. I'm Pen, and today I'll be reading the one shot, Why Does My Heart Flutter by the Corvid Prince. Once again, we're back up with the Corvid Prince's uh, bloody fix. This is a, I was going to say Shinso Koku, but no, Sengen uh, from Dr. Stone. Um, once again, I'm not sure if I've said this before, but... If you have not watched Dr. Stone, I highly, highly recommend it. I'm still in the middle of season three because I haven't watched it in months. But anyway, here is the summary. Sanku has no idea what that fluttering feeling in his chest means, but he knows who can tell him exactly what's go wrong with his brain. Again, his mentalist and close companion. But what will happen when the mentalist's idea about what's going on with the scientists exposes his rel realization Senku has re exposes a realization Senku hadn't realized was possible or Senku learns he's in love with Gen from Gen himself now this is really fluffy and really cutesy and oh this fic is amazing I just read it through read through it now because I've not read it in months maybe not months like a month but yeah this fic is really fluffy I hope you guys enjoy it I would not recommend, uh, uh, if you want to find more fix like this, like they're, the Corvid Prince has very few fluffy fix. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Will You Read My Eulogy? I've covered that on the channel before. Uh, but the Corvid Prince wrote that too, and it's really angsty. And most of the stuff is either angsty or smart, but this is one of the few times that they write fluff. So anyway, I hope you guys like it, and let's get right into the fic. Mentalist, Senku saddles again. As the black and white haired man turned around, he notices that the light green haired man looked much more nervous than he'd ever seen him. Do you have a moment? At first, Gen was uncertain on what to do or say. It was, a, it was clear that Senku was worried about something. This was the first time the other man had ever come to Gen about anything related to speaking about his feelings. Once the initial shock of the situation disappears, Gen nods and gives Senku his full attention. He had to admit he was a little curious about why the scientists had decided to come to him now. If there's something you need to talk about, I'll gladly listen to you, Senku, he said in his calmest voice, almost con his calmest, almost concerned voice. What do you need? The, so the scientists' eyes start around the room for a few seconds before settling on the floor just before Gen's feet. Senku opens his mouth to say a few words, but but they're much too jumbled, rushed, and quiet for the mentors to make out anything s specific. But whatever was Senku had, uh, whatever was Senku had said, had left him with a light blush. Gen gave the other man a sm uh, s small smile, and slightly turned his his body uh, a little slightly turned his body a little more to face Senku. Deciding against teasing the other man for the sudden display of emotions. Senku, is there something you want to say to me? Again, the scientist seems distracted as he looks around the room, doing anything but look at the mentalist before he speaks again. How do you know if you've fallen in love? Senku asks, his voice coming out all in nearly one breath. The scientist had never talked about emotional things with him, let alone show an interest in anything related to romance. So, the mentalist had no clue how to respond to the sudden outburst of emotions from the other man. But it was not something that the scientist needs to know about. Senku had come to him w with what he viewed as a serious problem, and as much as he was intrigued with the precise details about why and how the scientist concluded that he might be in love, Gen would fulfil his duties as the Stone World's best mentalist. Senku, you're blushing. He chuckles when he sees the, bl the blushing on the other when he sees the blush on the other man's face before continuing. Usually, when one's in love, their heart will beat faster, and their breathing deepens. They'll think about said person most of the time, and even dream about them. Gen takes a moment to catch his breath before he makes a somewhat selfish decision to approach the other man and place his hand on Sanku's shoulder. This might be the only t the only chance he'd have to show his abs this abs the absolutely fantastic man he'd fallen in love with 
a fraction of his true emotions towards him, something the mentalist had only just come to terms with internalizing for the few, f- had only just come to terms with keeping internalized for this for this foreseeable future. It wasn't Gen. It, it wasn't that Gen thought there was no chance that the scientist wasn't interested in him, because anyone with a brain could pick up the pick up the scientist's pathetic pining towards the mentalist. It was the fact that Senku seemed much more content on distracting himself with science than being forced to confront his feelings for Gen. The mentalist pla- paints almost a sickly sweet grin on his face and dones the voice he'd used many times to deceive the world's strongest brutes and ruffians. Well, a main sign of someone's love is blushing, and but that's just according to my experience. Again rings at Senku. The other, another question hot on his tongue. Do you have a question, someone? It seems the scientist was not anticipating the other to get so close to him or call out his flushed cheeks. He shrinks back a little, out of Gen's hands, and looks like he's ready to flee from the room altogether. Although, despite his fear, Senku manages to get a hold of himself enough to spit out a response. That's why I'm asking you, the man says with his cheeks a ta- take on a deeper pink hue. I've never felt this way before, but I have all the symptoms you've listed. My heart races when I think of him. I find myself short of breath. My mind wanders to less than scientific thoughts for longer than I like. It's affecting my ability to work. The scientist has has something akin to a frown on his face, as he as if the thought of anything triumphing his love for science thoroughly disgusts him. Gen gets Gen feels a great deal of pity towards the other man. He also feels idiotic that he hadn't seen the signs of Senku beginning to realize he was capable of having romantic interests. The mentalist had watched several times as the overworked scientist didn't do so much as bat an eye at any woman who showed him a fraction of interest. However, Gen could not recall a single instance where Senku had rejected the idea of a male lover. Though he hadn't approved of one, e- though he hadn't approved of one either, it was more than conclusive. More than a conclusive predicament to the scientist's pref- preferences than the alternative. The split-haired man chuckles as his expression lightens up as he looks at Senku's red and blushing face. His heart, his heart is racing in his chest, but he maintains a neutral expression. Every, every mentalist instinct, every, and every mentalist instinct in his body pointed out one exhilarating but terrifying conclusion. Senku was in love with him. It was more than a dream come true for Gen, but he wasn't entirely confident where to go from here. He would, how would he be able to charm the man? He thought unatta- how would he be able to charm the man? He thought unattainable while also ma- maintaining a calm and collected a- a- appearance that he was merely offering assistance and not having having the slightest inkling of for who exactly the scientist found himself falling for. It was a tr- it was truly a test benefiting the world's best mentalist. Oh how okay. Gen looked at Senku with a mocking smile on his face, as if to imply the other man had known for a while who this mystery lover was. So who's the lucky man l- l- lucky lad? The awkward laugh from the scientist all but exposes the truth Gen had been sure was coming. This would be certain this would certainly be exil- an exhilarating time for the mentalist. Mentalist, Senku says with an exasperated sigh. Can't you use that psychological expertise of yours to read my brain instead of instead of all but forcing me to embarrass myself with something I am completely unfamiliar with? Gen looked a little more excited upon hearing Senku's frustrated response. It was more fun. It was fun to see the usually stoic scientist turn into an into an embarrassed mess. The mentalist was caught between feeling satisfied that 
he was playing hard to get and sympathetic that the other man was uh, was utterly familiar with love and dating. Ultimately, Gen decides he'll give the other man a helping hand with confessing his love, but it was only because he was head over heels with the scientists. Hmm, you know what? Gen replies with a Cheshire, Cheshire cat grin and filtering his fingers over the scientist's shoulders. You're right, Senku. I'm supposed to be the mentalist here, right? Don't owe you, eh? I've got a good grasp on who's stolen your heart. Gen looks back at Senku with a smug smile on his face, almost daring the other man to challenge his knowledge of the human brain. You know? The scientist stutters. If the mentalist wasn't entirely convinced that he was him- that it was him, he, him, he himself was, well, thanks. If the mentalist wasn't entirely convinced that he himself was the subject of Senku's desires, perhaps he would tease the man a little more, but he had to admit that the, he was positively itching towards getting the awkwardness over with so he could show the scientists the wonders of the world of love and dating. Gan could not help himself from letting out a small giggle, covering his mouth as he laughs. Come on, you think I would, wouldn't know you're in love with me? We've been working together so long, eh? Onglay time. We've been working together for such a long lay time, thank you. I'm one of, I'm the world's best mentalist. It'll be hard to miss that you have a thing for me. The giddy mentalist chuckles as he moves closer towards the, temp- the trembling scientist again. Am I correct, dear Senku? Is it me that has soul in your heart? Gen looks like he's ex- an excited yet curious kitten as he eagerly waits for the scientist's response. I... Senku, tra- Senku trails off. I don't know what to say. Then, in a much quieter voice, he adds... Is it really that obvious that I'm in love with you? <laughs> I figured it out. I figured it out a long time ago. The mentalist reveals. Before the scientist can shy away, Gen moves closer to Senku and gets very close with him, enough that he can delicately place his hand on Senku's cheek with a gentle smile. Senku, I do like you a lot. I like your interest in, your, in scientific endeavours and how smart you are in the field. But beyond that, you have a warm heart that I can't help but feel myself drawn. That, but beyond that, you have a warm heart that I cannot help but feel myself drawn towards. Do you? Do I want to be with you? Yes, of course I do. He moves his face close to the Senkus, almost near. Almost near enough to brush their lips against one another and whisper softly, "Is it the same for you?" The scientist is the scientist is somehow a wondrous combination of blushing and embarrassed and pale. It's a mixture that leaves Gen utterly ex- ex- enthralled. Mentalist, Gen mumbles, looking at the wall as it becomes clearer that he's unable to maintain eye contact with his beloved mentalist. Again, I... He takes a moment to gather his words before speaking again. I have come to the conclusion that I am in love with you, and from what you have said, it appears that you feel similar to me, in a similar way to me. Senku still, sells, Senku still sounds like an analytic scientist, even now. Yes, yes, I don't think our feelings are for each other are similar. Gen nods with a mischievous grin on his face. It's much more genuine and much... It's his much more genuine expression, one full of love and ad- adoration for the other man that he'd hidden away in the hopes the scientists would he desired wouldn't notice. The mentalist light, gra- gently grabs Senku's chin and pulls him and pulls his partner's face towards the, forward until his breath goes to scientist's lips, bottom lip. I've been wa- I've been waiting to do this for for quite some time. As a mentalist, as the mentalist speaks up, he cannot help but notice how the other man's breath catches in his throat, and how his scarlet eyes are blown wide with surprise. Thank you, my love. In the next moment, the mentalist closes the rest of the gap between them and gives Sanku a small kiss on the lips. Gen stays like that, 
drinking in all the wondrous sensations of the scientist's warm lips, press against his own and waits until he waits and desperately prays that the other man will return the act of affection. It takes a few extra seconds for Sanku to process what the other man had done before he can make a move, but when he does, he does so in hopes of surprising the mentalist almost as much as the man had surprised him. His lips move awkwardly against Gens, and he finds himself draw- finds that his hands drawn to the hold of the mentalist's waists. Sanku's lip trembles a little when they break apart, and he stares at the man other man in wonder. Again, I... The scientist's cheeks are tinted a near scarlet shade as he murmurs his following words. Can we do that again? The mentalist chuckles as he realises how adorable it was that Sanku had taken a few seconds to realise that he'd been kissed. But the smile on his face grows wider when he sees the red and blushing face of the scientist at, after the end of the kiss. After the kiss ends. Gen's expression returns to a normal devious sm- to a devious smile once again when he hears Gen say he wanted to experience another kiss from him. You bet I'd love to give you as many kisses as you desire, he says, perhaps a little more chipper than his usual self. Come here, my beloved scientist. Gen takes Senku's chin and pulls him down t- for another kiss. A little longer this time. A little longer than the last. To his shock, the scientist's fingers grasp tightly at his sides and pull him impossibly closer as their lips dance together, as if they had been meant for one another. It's hard to believe that this was only their second kiss. You're... You're a miracle incarnate mentalist, Sankyo whispers, clearly out of breath as they break apart. I cannot believe that someone like you has eyes for someone as inexperienced in this world of love. Gen looks a little more winded as he recovers from having what must have been the best couple of kisses of his life. (laughs) Is that so? I never thought I'd be seen as a miracle, but if that's how you truly feel, then... The mentalist smirks, almost always as... always when... To bathe in as many compliments as possible. I suppose I'll be forced to accept your praises. In the next moment, Gen peers. Gen pries one of the scientist's hands from its position on his hip and caresses it in his. caresses it as he looks him in the eyes. And don't fret, dear Senku. I'll make sure that you become experienced in the world of lo- in, in the wonders of love. We'll go as f- slow or as fast as you want. The mentalist grins as he brings his free hand to Sanku's cheek, feeling the man's f- feeling over the man's button lip with a sly grin. You can be something like a science experiment to me. Sanku's blush grows a few shades deeper as he tries his best to obscure his face in Gen's shoulder which quickly backfires as Mentalist pushes the scientist away from his chest and smirks at the man. What? (laughs) What? He asks cheekily. Already getting shy? Mentalist? The Mentalist? The scientist half whines. All of this is so new to me. I don't know what I'm doing and you're just teasing me. Gen cocks his head to the side with a soft smile. I think it's my right to poke a little fun at you after all my, after all, I spent a long lay couple of months wondering if you, if scientists like you were capable of being in love at all. Before Sanku can respond, the other man is already trailing his fingers up his sides into the scientist's chest and a waist, but even so, no matter how long I had to wait for, uh, no matter how long I had to a way, eight what? Eight way for you, I would gladly do so as many times as I needed to. A confused expression crosses the scientist's face. Why? he wonders, oblivious to how he was leaning into the other man's hand. Why would you wait for me when you, I didn't even know how to verbalise my feelings towards you? 
He also um they sometimes dear thank you. The mentor is responsible for laugh and a slight pinch of the other man's cheek. The fact that I was willing to wait f- for you to figure out your feeling figure out your feelings for yourself is my proof of my love t- is proof of my love for you. I didn't need you to say that you cared for me in the same manner or even ca- care for you or kiss me or anything like that. Gan continues. Just being allowed to be in your presence and work beside you for the past couple of months was more than enough for me. A single cheer a single tear falls on the mentor's cheek, which soon becomes another and then a choked sob. Thank you. The man's voice is filled with anguish as he grip tightly grips the other man's tunic until his knuckles turn white. I can't all of a sudden, the, sen- the, men- the scientist's face is pale, and he looks almost fearful. You can't what? Senku answers, his voice is softer than he, than Gen, to- than Gen had ever heard before. Gen tackles the scientist to the ground and buries his head in the scientist's chest as he openly sobs, this- his chest heaving as he struggles to catch his breath. The scientist hesitantly places a hand on the other man's shoulder, confused as to why the usually bubbly mentalist was suddenly sobbing on the ground, but still wanting to show the man as much comfort as possible. Ah. Uh, Senku trails off momentarily before speaking up again. Are you okay, mentalist? Gen's blotchy Tear street st- tear stained face rises from its previous position, and the mentalist can feel his heart doing some sum- doing somersaults in his chest. The mentalist looked so small and fragile, and his eyes were illuminated, and shone brighter than uh, and shone, br- shone brighter after shedding tears. I'm absolutely fine, thank you. Gen expla- exclaims without a trace of the sobbing man that had been desperately clutching to him only moments before. Are you sure? The scientist cautiously responds cautiously, unsure of how to respond to the um, to such an emotional situation like this one. You, uh, you, you seemed rather upset just a couple of moments ago. In an even quieter voice, he adds, "And you didn't answer me about what you can't do." In an instant, Senku feels the other man's arms wrap around him tightly and embraces embraces for the heart-wrenching sound of the mentor sobbing, but it doesn't come. Instead, a calm hand strokes through his hair, and Senku ha- calmly hums into his ear rather than cries of pain. I'm sorry if I scared you my reaction, dear Senku. The mentalist whispers when the rest of the tension when the rest of the tension in the scientist's shoulders melts away. I just can't believe a situation like this is real. It still feels like it could be a dream. Regain- regaining a bit of, s- of confidence and feeling a little better now that he knows he, g- that the man he cares about so deeply was feeling alright, Senku pl- gently pinches Gen's cheek with a smirk on his face, laughing under his breath when the mentalist looks at him confused. I might not be well versed in the nature of love and romance, he begins, rubbing the spot over he'd just pinched his beloved cheek. But I do know that you aren't dreaming. To seal the deal, Senku does something he never thought he would never thought he would have the nerve to do in ten billion years. He pulls the mentalist closer to him, closes his eyes and connects their lips. It takes a few seconds for the other man to respond to the kiss, but when he does, Gen's nails dig into Senku's skin, resulting in a soft moan of surprise that the mentalist swears he'll be hearing on repeat for the rest of time. The kiss deepens a li- the kiss deepens a little further, and before they know what they're doing, Senku realizes that he's in the other man's hands. That the other man's hands are wandering underneath his tunic, and were exploring his chest. He mentally notes that Gen was as sneaky with his hands as he was with his tongue. A thought that utterly exhilarates the scientist. He's already dreaming up a dozen things he'd like to do with the, like to try with the mentalist, ranging from fluffy to utterly sinful. 
both men are flush and panting when they need to when the need for oxygen is just too great for them to continue the amorous exchange and allow their most deep-seated desires to control them whoa Senko was the first to speak making the mental slit out a hearty laugh and claps his head against the scientist's shoulders well the mentalist says a little more husky from sobbing his voice a little husky from sobbing i don't think i'm dreaming anymore then the man's face tw- twists into a smirk but i think i might need a few more couple more, couple more reminders just for safe reasons of course though the scientist was able to navigate w- was naive regarding means of seduction he quickly interprets gen's alterni- ulterior motives senku wraps an arm around gen's waist and stands and moves to set and moves a strand of hair away from his ear so he can whisper to him i wouldn't remind you reminding i wouldn't mind reminding you either both men are giddy and ex- giddy and giggling as they rush from the lab to the observatory where they have at least a comfortable place to lay while they decide to do that they want nothing more than to explore and worship each other's bodies. Senku's usually analytic and ever-observant brain goes into overdrive, Gen- with Gen's worn lips and hands mapping every inch of his body. The scientist feels it like an observer in his own life, as he loses track of where his own limbs are wandering. He vaguely processes clothes being shed, and the mentalist body and the ment- and the mentalist body again pushing him down onto the bed and climbing on top of him but he isn't sure when or how it happened you're so pretty again whispers his words being one of the only things Senku's brain could make sense of i love you so much despite being overwhelmed by the warmth and pleasure of what the mentalist's magic words and touches could do to drive him crazy. Senku finds in his brain fu- to function enough to string together a few words that he needed that he needed to say f- to Gen for su- quite some time. I love you too. Okay, everyone, that was "Why Does My Heart Flutter" by the Corvid Prince. Uh, yes, I know this was recorded in advance. This was recorded yesterday, as when this is published. Uh, because I'm going to my dad's today. Yay! It's my little sister's birthday. Uh, yeah. Uh, dad lives, like, a little while away. So, yeah, that happens. Anyway, uh, hope you guys all had a, <laughs> all had an amazing time. And I love this fic so much. If you want to give this author support, the COVID Prince, I will leave the fic, the link to the fic in the, des- in the description below. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I'll see you guys later. Bye!